Hi everybody, welcome to Colorado Inside Out, the, two, the December 14th, 2018 edition. We're very glad you're joining us. My name is Dominic Zuda. I am your host for today, and it should be a very exciting show, so thank you for joining us. Let's get to it. Let's get a quick take on Westward reporting the results of MoveOn.org poll, a poll that shows John Hickenlooper polling at less than 1% among preferred Democratic candidates. Patty Calhoun from Westward. Uh, now, John Hickelooper is used to polling at around 1%. That's where he started when he had his bid for mayor. But uh, what does this show as, we, as he gets into the presidential polling season? Mostly it shows that the current crop of maybe candidates would fit in a clown car. If you looked at it, the poll, actually the highest percentage, 17%, went to nobody or somebody else. Beto O'Rourke came in at just under 15%, and he was the top vote getter. So you can see that we're going to have a very interesting ride over the next 18 months. We certainly should. David, at at what point does the eventual candidate, the eventual nominee, begin to, I guess, maybe not dominate the polls, but at least get above 1%? When, when do we need to start paying attention? Uh, the year after next, in, okay. in the actual election year. <laughs> Jimmy Carter at this stage was an unknown governor of Georgia, went on to win the Democratic nomination in 76. Conversely, in 2004 in the Democratic primaries for president, Howard Dean, the Vermont governor, was atop of everything in December and the overwhelming consensus of the experts and everybody else was he was going to win the nomination. As it turned out, his scream in Iowa after coming in second place was kind of the end of him. and. It didn't work out. So Hickenlooper is keeping his eye on the ball and working on uh, hiring a good campaign staff right now. Eric Sonnen, political analyst. Uh, the polls, uh, these early polls that we're seeing, do they, are they worth anything before we get to Iowa? Yes, they're worth something. Uh, uh, sounds <laughs> like an echo in here. The voice of the, 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 the very powerful I'll, voice of Eric Sonnen. I'll, I'll, I'll differ with David um, <laughs> a little bit here. A poll in December of 2018 means nothing. He's totally right about this. But I do think polls start to matter maybe next fall, well before Iowa, well before any ballots are cast. And here's the reason. Similar to the Republican contest in 2016, you have more candidates than will fit on a debate stage. If you're going to be a serious candidate, you need to be on the main debate stage, not the second tier or the third tier stage. And that will be determined by polling. So you need to start registering. You need to start showing up come next late summer or fall. I do think John Hickenlooper has a lane to run in, stylistically contrasting with Donald Trump as opposed to the big ideological contrast with Trump. It's a narrow lane. If a Joe Biden gets in, a Michael Bloomberg, people like that, the, name get, the lane gets very, very narrow. Natasha Gardner, articles editor of 5280 Magazine. Uh, what do you think does uh, being uh, less than 1%, because of a 0.7% depress John Hickenlooper or say, hey, you know, this is, this is where I started last time, no big deal? Well, and since he isn't officially in the race yet, it's I, true. if you're not polling in, in that race, it shouldn't be a big <laughs> deal. Uh, I, I don't think he needs to worry about it in the same way that I don't think any of the other potential candidates around the country need to worry about it right now. I think my biggest concern is that any particular article that I read has as many as 20 names or more. So as a journalist, I'm going to have to start memorizing <laughs> everyone's name who's involved in that, let alone voters by the time it gets to a ballot or even, in, in, as Eric mentioned, on the debate stage. I mean, we might need a fourth or a fifth <laughs> level of debates at the rate that we're going. Um, but I do think it'll be interesting. This, this election is far away, but we do have a year to start um, drilling down on what these candidates are about and what, what the country is looking for next, because I think that's the ultimate goal. They do have to have um, someone to run against Trump, and they're going to need somebody who appeals to the vast majority of Americans. The problem is right now, I don't think anyone could say with certainty what that person needs to be. That is for dang sure, but it should be fun to watch.